Hello friends, Christian Carter from Radius Financial Group with another great topic this week. Um, actually a topic that sometimes gets on my nerves. So let's talk about phantom cash flow versus real cash flow. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, phantom cash flow, right? First of all, what is phantom cash flow? Actually, let me back up. When I'm talking about phantom cash flow, this is basically my definition, right? This is Christian Carter's definition of phantom cash flow um, when it comes to real estate, right? So what is it? It is income that appears to be generated by the property, but isn't actually received, right? So phantom cash flow. It's kind of like a mirage in the desert, right? You're looking at this beautiful mirage in the desert, and then once you get closer, once you get closer to that thing, it's not there, right? Um, and when it comes to phantom cash flow, this is probably the example that I hear all the time, right? I hear this example all the time, and this is so inaccurate. Something along the lines of this. Okay, I bought a property, right? And I make $2,000 in monthly rent, right? However, my monthly mortgage is, over, is only $1,600 per month, so I'm profiting $400 per month. That is so wrong. I can't even begin to describe it. So again, phantom cash flow is essentially wishful thinking, right? Um, another thing that I find people falling into uh, this kind of trap of phantom, uh, phantom cash flow a lot of times is, is they'll manipulate the numbers on a property in order to make the numbers work and make them feel better, right? So be very, very careful when it comes to phantom cash flow. All right, now let's go on to the adult side of the whiteboard, right? Now we're going to talk about real cash flow. Now, first of all, what is real cash flow? It's actual income received from the property after all expenses have been paid or accounted for. That one's big right here too, or accounted for. So you're taking into account um, expenses that will happen this month, as well as two, two, three months down the road, two, three years down the road, right? Um, now, I also find that people, a lot of times, they don't take into account all the income that they could be making off a property, right? So when we take into account the total monthly income, of course, we're going to um, take into account the rental income, right? So how much money you charge your tenants. There's also so much other uh, monthly income that people can make off their properties. This is just a couple right here. Um, laundry income, that's huge on especially multifamily properties. Uh, storage is a big deal, both in multifamily and single family homes. Um, you can rent out buildings on the, on the property for storage, or you can just rent out raw land like we do. Um, we have plenty of spots that we rent out raw land uh, for people to park boats, trailers, RVs, things like that. And then essentially miscellaneous, so any other income that you make off the property. Um, maybe if you're in the city and you have some good parking spaces, right, you can rent those out. So um, again, I find that a lot of people don't take into account all the total monthly income. And then this is what they really don't take into account, right, the actual expenses. So let's go over the easy ones first, right. So mortgage payment, so you know, your principal and interest, what you're paying the loan back. Um, real estate taxes, homeowners insurance, and then uh, HOA or condo dues. So HOA, of course, is a homeowners association. Everyone, for the most part, pretty much gets these expenses correct. Um, but a lot of times I don't hear people going into the other expenses, such as, let's say, utilities, for example. So you've got, you may not have all, you probably don't have all these, but they're good to take into account for. Water, sewer, garbage, gas or propane, electricity, and heating oil. So who's going to be paying that? Is the landlord going to be paying that? Or is the tenant going to be paying that? And if it's a multifamily property, are they already subdivided? So you're, you know, actually able to pass that um, expense onto the tenant? So just think about all the utilities that go into it. Lawn care and snow removal. This can, this can vary uh, dramatically, right? So we have one property in Attleboro where there's basically no lawn care whatsoever because there's no lawn. It's all like asphalt and concrete, right? But then we do have a, have a property on the uh, Canadian border up in New Hampshire, and you can bet your bottom daughter, dollar we pay a buttload of money just for snow removal, right? Just for snow removal and sanding. 
So these are two expenses that could really, really cut into your budget. Um, vacancy rate. Vacancy rate is a tough one because I, and I, and I agree with this statement, but I hear a lot of times that the rental market is so hot um, that vacancy rate isn't really a thing right now. And I agree the rental market is very hot right now. It's easy, um, at least where we are, to get your um, unit or apartment or a house fully rented, right? However, vacancy rate takes into account, you know, when people move out of the property and you then have to take like, whether it's 15 days or 30 days or whatever, to kind of clean up a little bit, clean the property um, and, and list it and market it and get a new tenant in there, right? So you need to take into account vacancy rate. Some people use a percentage, you know, five or 10%, um, and it matters if it's a single family home or a multifamily, but you need to take into account a uh, vacancy rate. All right, the next one is big. The next two are actually big. Repairs and CapEx, and of course CapEx stands for capital expenditures, right? So repairs are pretty straightforward. That's like holes in the walls and things like that, right? You might wanna budget like 50 to 100 bucks a month um, per unit. Um, you know, for repairs, something small. CapEx uh, is a big project down the line, right? And you need to take into account uh, this. So big projects like uh, new roofs, um, water heaters, things like that. So think of CapEx as kind of the big projects that you're not going to run into month to month, uh, but you might run into every two to three years or three to five years or whatever, right? Very, very important to keep to to know the difference between repairs and capex and to account for them and then lastly property management right property man management can vary wildly i know for you know long-term rentals it could be around seven percent of the total monthly income right uh, but for a short-term rental uh, i know there are short-term um, property management companies out there that charge up to 30 percent of the total uh, monthly income which is pretty astounding so you've got to take into account property management. Even if you're managing the property uh, yourself right now, you still want to account for it down the line. All right, that's all she wrote. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you can give it a big thumbs up. Um, any other uh, topics for videos, please leave them in the comments below, and I will make sure to make a video on that. And of course, if you like uh, the majority of my videos, it helps my channel if you could subscribe to it. Other than that, um, I will see everyone later. Adios.